Hi guys, we are going to discuss propofol infusion syndrome in adults. Propofol infusion syndrome is a rare but extremely dangerous complication of propofol administration. Propofol is an anesthetic, firstly, and it has a sedative, hypnotic, anxiolytic, anticonvulsant properties. It has a rapid onset of action and short duration of action. Even if it is ad administered for a long time of duration, a uh, patient recover firstly from uh, the propofol. It can also accumulate in the blood and ha have a prolonged uh, duration. Have also anti-inflammatory, anti-oxidative and other properties that uh, are not so important for us. Neuroprotective properties as it diminishes metabolism or decreases metabolism and have a protection for uh, neurological cells. Reduces the intracranial pressure. So for two of these properties, propofol is often used in neurosurgery. It stimulates GABA A uh, receptors and GABA B also for brain. Gamma aminobutyric acid, which is um, inhibitory receptor, it blocks uh, NMDA receptors, which are uh, excitatory receptors, and it diminish uh, calcium influx via slow calcium ion, ion channels. What are the risk factors that can lead to propofol infusion syndrome or can add to existing uh, risk factors? So critical ill patients, patients in sepsis with status epilepticus, tissue hypoxia, so all the critical ill states of uh, patients. High catecholamine levels, uh, endo endogenous or exogenous administered or from the cell body. High cortisol level, so all the stress hormones can lead to this low carbohydrate intake from liver disease, starvation, malnutrition. As you know, uh, propofol is emulsion, uh, lipidic emulsion and increase lipids uh, level in the blood. Also carnitine deficiency and subclinical mitochondrial disease at the cell level. High lipid intake, inborn errors of fatty uh, acid oxidation. And the most important is duration of administration more than 48 hours and dose more than 6 mg per kilogram per minute. So if you are administering uh, propofol for two days in a row, you can change this one or give it with less doses and administering concomitantly a different uh, type of a sedative. Clinical presentations that could suggest as a propofol infusion syndrome. So many of the changes like cardiovascular with widening of the QRS complex, Brugada syndrome like uh, patterns, ventricular tachyarrhythmias, cardiogenic shock, and even a systole. It also affects uh, muscles with myopathy and rhabdomyolysis, dis destruction of the muscles and going to the uh, to the kidneys, metabolic acidosis with hyperkalemia. All of these are coming from destruction of muscle. Elevated liver enzymes, hepatomegaly, steatosis, and hypertriglyceridemia. As I told you, uh, propofol is emulsion, emulsion with a uh, percent of lipids. What is the treatment? So prevention is the first one in many of the diseases so no more than 48 uh, hours infusion with dose uh, more than um, more than four milligram per kilogram per hour and substitution with different sedative agents like cypental or even uh, midazolam or you can give uh, dexmedetomidine which have a protective uh, properties like do not uh, don't have action on on, um, on depressing the respiratory system. Administration of sodium bicarbonate and renal replacement therapy only in cases of metabolic acidosis, so hyperkalemia and 
rhabdomyolysis are strong indications for renal replacement therapy. Also, for patients with uh, traumatic brain uh, injury, you, you can uh, maintain your volemia and it should be maintained. And cardiogenic shock, which should be man man managed with vasopressors and inotropes like dopamine and uh, norepinephrine. Thank you very much and have a good time, guys.